You're so good at your job, you get promoted. Maybe you're even popular with your coworkers moving into that first leadership position and all the wheels come off. Why does this happen and what can you do about it? Diane Nelson is a leadership coach with the Nelson team, and she's going to tell us all about this little phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane, what kind of problems do people run into when they get their first leadership position? Well, I'm going to speak to that from personal experience because it certainly uh, rings true in my experience in, in my, uh, my my life at, at work. The thing is, you um, when you're doing the work, uh, whatever the job is, you, you've uh, trained for that, you've gone to school for that, you're excited about that kind of work, you do it and you do it well. But inevitably, over time, you start looking around and thinking, hey, this could be done better. There's a There's a better way of doing this or gosh, if the manager would only do X, or if if there was a kind of a, a, a different response, we would be working so much better together. So you start thinking about those things and you want to you wanna prove yourself. You want to uh, get the opportunity to do that and, and lead. So then, so the opportunity does does show up and there you are, you, you move into that new role. Life is good, you get better pay, you maybe get a better office or a better position. Um, you're feeling feeling like your, your work is paying off. And then within a bit of time, however that, that could be days, could be weeks, we kind of go through a honeymoon period in a new role. And then you start to feel like it's coming at you from all sides. You've got senior leadership or the owner saying, hey, come on, we need these numbers, we need this report, where is it? you've got colleagues or other department heads who are kind of standing around saying, okay, new guy, let's go. What, what's up here? And you have your own people that you either worked with as, a, as an equal, or if you're new coming in from outside the company, they're looking to you and saying, okay, buddy, let's go. What, what's up here? So there's pressures from all sides and there's urgency usually. And then, so this all starts to pile up. And it piles up in a way that uh, makes it hard for you to figure it out. What is the next step? How do I make this work? And confidence is one great thing, but overconfidence can really be a challenge for, for everybody. And, and that's often what happens for, for leaders. They, they maybe come in overconfident and then have stopped listening or, or don't listen in the way they need to, to understand what's going on and to understand how other people are wired and working so that they can team up. There's a, so, yeah. So they come in, uh, they're unaware of the pressures that were above their right. boss before them. They have these great new ideas that are going to fix every problem yes. and they have to prove themselves to people who were either were their friends or maybe have a little animosity coming in. Could so be. you end up with tension in the workplace, yep. maybe a loss in productivity and some tension going up, going down. And the person in the new leadership position is isolated. Kind of squished in between. Yeah. 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 So what can they do? Well, I was, uh, I was starting to say that around the most important skills I feel in every, in every workplace, the most important skills for, le for leaders to be successful is to have really good communication. And that's communication so that they're very clear and explicit about what they need, what they expect from others, what needs to get done. And be able to communicate that in a way that is not a, okay, you go do that and hurry up. You know, the, the tell, sell, you know, push attitude, because that doesn't go over very well. It's a position where you need to be able to influence. And you gain that influence as you gain trust with people and paying attention to how you're building a trusting relationship with those that you that are your direct reports as well as your your colleagues and your superiors. It's all about trust. And when you establish uh, the, that great level of trust, and it's always an ongoing, always an on building uh, kind of process. But as you gain that trust, then you can have really good conversations and you can deal with things that are problems or difficult or conflictual in some way. That's the thing. You can have those difficult conversations if you've built a good level of, tr of trust. And if you haven't, then conflict can really spiral. Right. And a lot of trust starts with, you know, listening. 
you know, you think you're the boss, so now you get to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. But what is often hidden is that, you know, leadership really starts from listening and gathering and making people feel empowered. Right, right. And it's not about doing. That's the that's the other thing that I find very common for leaders at all at all stages in their career. I've heard it from senior leaders who have been senior leaders for many many years. So here's a quote that rings loud in my mind: "Was if people would just do as I tell them to do it, we'd be fine. I know exactly what needs to be done. If they would just do it, we'd be making money." And I. As I heard that, and I know in so many ways, this, this particular leader has been very successful, but it showed the chasm between his him and everyone else. He was not connecting with people. He was not getting that message across. He was telling them. And unfortunately, that's not going to work in a team environment. And our workplaces uh, these days in the in the 2000s is all about team collaboration that's where really exciting stuff gets um, created and, and and new ways of doing things gets done because we collaborate silos don't work and uh, the leaders who are more inclined to tell are stuck in in a very um, siloed uh, hierarchical system and it's not productive. No, you need to, I mean, people prefer to be asked, even if it's the oh, yeah. directive. Better to be asked, better to ask questions. Asking is a great way to go. Mm -hmm. But not just because it's a good way to go. It's because people have better answers <laughs> than, yes. than the, the solo person. There are so many answers in the people who do the work on a day-to-day -day basis that if you don't tap into that knowledge and experience, then you really are a lame duck. You miss mm -hmm. you miss out on so much. So bringing it bringing it forward is always a better solution uh, for the problem and certainly better for the relationship. Yeah, and as a boss, you're not the expert in everything, right? And, and you need the expertise of everybody to get them going. And if you dictate all the time, they're going to shut down. That's right. right. A lot of the problems we see with these is people get the position, but nobody ever gives them the leadership training or rarely. Right. Right. You know, they're just thrown out of the nest rather than being taught to fly. Yes. There's just not enough uh, attention given to that. And it, and it happens at a couple of different levels. And uh, just reflecting back on, on my own journey, in in school, there was no leadership development training. There was no communication training either. And so how do you learn these skills? Well, you learn them on the job. But if nobody has really learned them anywhere along the way, and in the job, things can get, uh, you know, priorities get, get missed. And so then we tend to repeat what we see. We tend to emulate what we've what we've been experiencing. And so even though we have great ideas about being a better leader, we still end up falling back on the patterns that we've experienced when we were um, reporting to that leader. And a great way around this, the easiest way around this is to get some leadership training. Uh, and it solves a lot of problem. Almost all of the problems I've headed off in my management career yeah. have been by training people and giving them a big jump ahead. And that's something you do at uh, the Nelson team is mm -hmm. train people in leadership so that they don't run into the middle manager blues. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I think, I think in some organizations or some individuals feel like if they need to get coaching on how to lead that the, somehow that they're, they're not up to the job or that they're not good enough, but the exact opposite is true. When, when people open themselves up to, I need to get, get some input on this. I need some coaching around this because it's not a book you can go and read. Well, you can read it, but you know, reading a book doesn't help you make the practice happen. That's mm -hmm. where coaching makes the practice happen and, and, and you work through so many different scenarios. So if you, uh, rather than people getting kind of that sense of, well, I guess I better get some remedial training. No, it's about growth. And growth happens throughout a, a career, throughout a lifetime. And people who are great leaders are those who have 
looked for that kind of development, whether it be through a one-on-one -on -one coaching or through a leadership course or through a mentoring program. I mean, there's many ways of getting that kind of development, but the great leaders get it. And I've heard statistics, and I'm, I'm, I'll be not quite correct in my quoting, but I, I believe that 80% um, of CEOs do get uh, executive coaching throughout their career and repeatedly. And again, I will say that I was one of those recipients as well. Well, you don't get to the Hall of Fame without being coached heavily and learning and learning and learning all the time. And, you know, I had leadership training since public school and I've used it my whole life. Uh, you cannot get enough training in this. And it's one of those things that gives immediate benefits. If you want to get a hold of Diane to get some leadership training, you're in the, you're hidden into that middle management role well worth it. It's going to make your life easier and the, li the, the lives of the people around you yes. easier and more productive. Diane, thank you so much. There's her email address, diane at the nelsonteam.com. Diane, thank you so much for talking about this today. Thanks, Craig.